right, 7.4 inverse functions. So let's take a look here what we have. Um, basically, uh, we're going to first take a look at one-to-one -one functions. And basically what a one-to-one -one function is, is it's saying whenever you plug in a value, you get out um, only one value. So if I plug in a B, I get one answer for B. If I plug in a C, I get one answer for C. If I plug in an X, I get one answer for X. So every X goes to one Y. That's what an, um, we're worried about here. That's what a one-to-one -one function is. Every X goes to one Y value. So when we take a look here at example one, I want to prove that this is one-to-one. -one. Well, it's actually pretty simple to prove if something is one-to-one -one or not. And here's what you do. Um, you take 3X plus 2 and you write it down here. And what I want you to do is you write the same thing set equal to itself, except instead of an X, we put a Y there. So same item. All I want you to do here is solve. And what we're looking for is, if for some reason, when you're solving, you get x equals y, then your answer is 1 to 1. And if you don't, then it's not. So let's try to solve both of these. I subtract 2 on both sides. And look, the 2's end up canceling out on both sides, leaving me with 3x equals 3y. I divide both sides by 3. And when I do that, I end up getting x equals y. So we would state that 3x plus 2 is 1 to 1. That's what we would suggest here because we got x equals y as our answer. So yes, it is 1 to 1. So now we take a look at this one. x squared minus 3 is at 1 to 1. So like we said before, we need to separate this. So x squared minus 3 goes over here and I take out the x and I put a y in its spot. So it's y squared minus 3. So to solve this, I would do what I did before because I'm trying to prove that x equals y. So I would add 3 to both sides. So I do that, and they cancel out, leaving you with x squared equals y squared. I can now square root both sides. And when I do that, I get x equals plus or minus y. Remember, whenever you square root an item, you get a plus or minus because you get two answers. So the point is, I do get x equals y, but I also get x equals negative y. That's the key. I get two answers. I get x equals y, but I also get x equals negative y. And because I get those two answers, x equals y and x equals negative y, because I have that other answer there, I have two answers. I'm just looking for x equals y, not x equals negative y, which means this is not one to one then, because I'm getting two answers. Hey, is this super so, an easier way to actually do something like this is surprisingly enough to graph it because if you graph it, you can graph it and see if it's one to one by drawing a horizontal line. And if it crosses the graph at one point, then it's one to one. So this is called the horizontal line test. So we're going to try to use the horizontal line test here on the first example we just did. Now we already know the answer, but I'm going to prove to you why it is using the horizontal line test. According to this graph, that means I go up two and put a point that's my y-intercept. Now I go up 1, 2, 3, and over 1, up 1, 2, 3, and over 1, and put a point there, and I draw a line. According to the horizontal line test, if I draw a horizontal line through it and it only touches it at one point, right, it's 1 to 1. Well, look, it touches at one point, touches at one point, touches at one point. So that would state, according to that rule, that it is 1 to 1. That is a 1 to 1 function, as we knew from before. Um, x squared minus 3 now, when I go and graph that, I have my list of points here. Negative 2 uh, oh, up 1 right there. Um, we have negative 1, negative 2. We have 0, negative 3. We have 1, negative 2. And we have 2, 1. So there's a list of my points. And I draw the lines and connect them. So horizontal line test states, I draw a horizontal line through it, right? There it is. And the reason why it's not, right, the reason why it's a no is because, look, it crosses at one, two points. It crosses at one, two points. So the horizontal line crosses at more than one point, and because it crosses at more than one point, the answer is no. It is not a function. So the inverse function here, quick, is saying y equals f of x if and only if um, x equals g of y. Now, I know right now, looking at that, that doesn't make much sense but that's what we're going to um, explain here with some examples. And what I also want you to keep in mind is when you have the inverse function, that's like saying uh, f to the negative 1. So if you do happen to see that, 
um, anywhere. That's basically what that means. We're talking about f to the negative 1. We're talking about inverse functions. Um, and you can do and prove uh, inverse functions using the inverse function theorem by taking f of x and plugging it into your g of x. And you'll understand that when we go over uh, some examples here. But you have to check it both ways. Um, you're going to get two answers. We're going to switch and make an inverse function, and when you have the original and the inverse function, you take turns plugging each of them into each other. And when you plug each of them in, if when you solve it you get one variable as your answer x, and then when you do it again you get one variable as your answer y, then that that will tell you whether or not those are inverse functions of each other. Okay. So when we get back here we're going to find the inverse of this and we're going to try to plug them both together to see what we get as our answer. Uh, but we'll have to do that when we come back. So I'll have to leave you a little cliffhanger there and we'll have to continue with inverse functions in 7.4 later.